I'm in the northwestern province of Sri Lanka. Together with my team, I've just been visiting the Coco Green Company, a UK Sri Lanka company based in Ganawata, which is working with coconut husks, using those husks to make more organic material, which is used in the growth of vegetables and fruit. The company has just received two awards. First of all, for the quality of its product, which is highly environmentally friendly. And secondly, for its good labor, ethical labor standards and good working conditions. Coco Green employs some 250 people here in Sri Lanka. And it's a good news story of the effective business, technical, educational and scientific collaboration between the United Kingdom and Sri Lanka. Over the next few days, we'll be visiting Anuradhapura, Manar and Putulam. We'll be meeting government ministers, representatives of civil society, non-governmental organisations. We'll also be meeting leaders of the faith communities here in Sri Lanka, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim and Christian, discussing with them how the faiths can work together in helping to develop Sri Lanka in a post-conflict context. I will also be looking at some of the specific projects which the British government is funding, supporting Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka's people going forward. It's a magnificent piece of engineering. The embankment is three miles long, 37 feet high, and it holds as a reservoir some 1,500 million cubic feet of water. These tanks are essential to the irrigation system within Sri Lanka and particularly important this year as in some past years when there's been a drought and having these tanks allows water still to get to the paddy fields, allows farmers to make a livelihood and have their produce go to market. I'm very pleased to say that the UK, together with our European Union partners, continue to fund water irrigation projects in this country to help growth and livelihoods. I'm standing beside the ruined Welisaya Stupa, one of the most important sites of Buddhism in Sri Lanka and here in this ancient area of Anuradhapura. It's a magnificent prospect. I've also paid my respects on the chief monk and discussed with him interfaith issues here in this part of the country and how the Buddhist community operates together with the other communities within this country. I also paid my respects at the Sri Maha Bodhiya, the ancient Bodhi tree taken from the tree under which the Lord Buddha received his enlightenment. And I met the chief incumbent there and discuss the work he's carrying out on interfaith dialogue between the communities. I was encouraged by what he had to say. That was also the site of an attack by the LTT in 1985, in which 146 people were tragically killed. Thank goodness such atrocities are to an end that physical peace has come to this country. We now look to support the work of bringing the different communities of each ethnic background and each religious background together in Sri Lanka. I'm outside the shrine of Our Lady of Madhu, one of the principal places of worship for the Catholic community here in Sri Lanka. This church and the shrine have been here for over 400 years and each year many pilgrims come here to worship. But not just pilgrims from the Catholic community, but also people from different faiths and religions, Protestants, Buddhists, Hindus, all come here to worship and share their common values. The area around this church was a place of refuge during Sri Lanka's long conflict. It was declared a neutral zone by the United Nations and at one point some 30,000 plus people were living here, taking refuge. Unfortunately, in 1999, this neutral zone was broken 
There was shelling and over 40 people were killed. A chapel was destroyed. Children were killed. There were accusations from both sides, but the view of the international community was that both the LTTE and government forces had broken the ceasefire at that time. Later on, the statue was taken away to protect from shelling and kept safe. I'm pleased to say it has now been returned to its rightful place. This area is again at peace and people from both communities are able to come here again to worship. I'm just outside the Tirukketas Varam temple in Manar, a Hindu kovo which is important to Hindus across Sri Lanka. It's dedicated to the deity Shiva, who is believed to have been established in the 6th century BC. Next week is this temple's major festival, and some 30 to 40,000 Hindus from across Sri Lanka will come to visit here. And some of them, after visiting here, will also go on to visit the Shrine of Our Lady of Madhu, which I have just been at. A good example of two faiths respecting each other and working together. We are standing on the causeway just outside Manar town, here on the west coast of Sri Lanka. I have just been meeting the government agent and his team, discussing the work they are carrying out in this area, work on housing, making provision for returning internally displaced persons, discussing the challenges faced by single women heads of household, and also discussing the economic reconstruction taking place here. We've also been meeting members of civil society, working here in often very difficult circumstances to raise issues of human rights and equality, the other half of the long-term reconciliation equation. And we wish them well because it's important in any democracy that civil society also has the opportunity to operate freely. And we hope that between them, these different institutions can help to achieve long-term reconciliation here in Sri Lanka. I'm standing outside the main mosque in Putalam. It's a beautiful building, a beautiful place of worship. And I've been meeting members of the Putalam mosque community, discussing with them the work they do, supporting members of the Muslim community, but also people of other faiths in this area, helping them to self-start in business, helping them to get their feet on the ground and make better living for themselves. I've also been hearing about some of the challenges the community faces here, the challenge of being able to access government services in their own language and the concern that good interfaith relations should continue, that there must be no extremism, rather that the different faiths should be able to operate communally in peace together here. I'm on the outskirts of the busy town of Putalam. We've just finished a meeting with representatives of Muslim internally displaced persons here, a community that was driven out of the north of Sri Lanka some 25 years ago. Some of those people wish to return to the north, but there isn't land and housing available for them to do so. Some of those people would like to stay here in Putlam, but again, there is not permanent provision for them. The important point is, as the UN Special Rapporteur for the Human Rights of Internally Displaced Persons has said, is that there must be a durable solution to the IDP problem here in Sri Lanka. We've also had a meeting here in Putalam with the Women in Need organisation. This is a Sri Lanka-wide organisation with nine branches across the country which supports victims of domestic violence, providing them with support and counselling which they require in a country where domestic violence remains all too great a problem. The United Kingdom government continues to support the work of women in need 
Financially, we've given them some £50,000 support over the past two years and look forward to supporting them in their further work in the future. We're now back at the High Commission, having had a very useful visit to see for ourselves how things are outside Colombo. It was good to meet senior members of the different faiths. Sri Lanka has a long tradition of peaceful coexistence and cooperation between faiths and religions, and it's obviously important that this continues in the post-conflict period as part of long-term reconciliation. We also learned about some of the continuing challenges. Challenges in accessing government services in different languages, the challenges faced by those who suffer domestic violence, particularly women in this country. The British Government will continue to support projects to address these issues, supporting the Government's trilingual language policy, in particular English language teaching, where we can assess, assist, and supporting the work of Women in Need, which is giving practical help and support to victims of domestic violence. We are also continuing to support projects in the policing field. We have supported community policing training in the past and we are now supporting best policing practice, best ethical policing standards. We believe that by supporting such practical projects we can help to make a difference here for people here in Sri Lanka.